Hello everybody, I am Diptarka Chakravarti. So today I will be talking about reachability in faulty graph. So before going into the talk, so let me introduce briefly. So I joined here as an assistant professor about a year ago. So before that, I did my PhD from Indian Institute of Technology, Kanpur, and then I spent two years in Charles University, Prague, and then almost a year in Weizmann Institute of Science in Israel as a postdoc. So from my research interest, what I am interested in is mostly on algorithm and theory, more specifically algorithms for big data, string algorithms, like algorithms related to edit distance, Hamming distance, like all similar string simulator measure algorithms, then graph algorithms, data structure, proving lower bounds, lower bounds for data structure or hardness of approximation. And in all this topic, so I am also interested in uh, designing algorithms in streaming model, in the fault tolerant uh, graph model, so which is the topic of today's talk, and also in the dynamic network. So let's now come to today's talk. So let me introduce what is graph. I mean, I'm sure that all of you know, but uh, just a brief recap. So graph is a set of vertices and set of edges. So edges are just, uh, just a connection between pair of vertices. So there are a few classical problems on graph that you studied in undergrad algorithm course, like reachability or connectivity, shortest distance algorithms, minimum spanning tree, and then there are vertex cover, maximum independent set, and so on. There are several classical algorithms. Okay. So now imagine uh, that you have to answer multiple queries. So for example, you have access to say, this roadmap of Singapore, and then you want to efficiently compute uh, distance queries for a different different source destination pair. You can imagine like uh, you are driving a car and you are, so this is the map and in the map server, you are placing these queries that, uh, okay, so I'm driving from, so this place X to this place Y, so what is the shortest distance? And then your friend is also querying like, okay, I'm going from a place U to V, then what is the shortest distance between these places? So there are all these multiple queries uh, that uh, needs to be being served by this uh, server. So you can uh, think that, okay, so I can apply for each such query, I can apply those classical, say, shortest distance algorithm that you have been taught in the undergrad, but uh, the problem is uh, then the time is huge because if you recall for all this algorithm, you at least need say, you have to read all the edges. So can we do uh, better when you have to solve multiple queries? Okay, so that's why what people do is uh, fast from this uh, map, they construct a data structure. And then when you place the query, then you place the query in the data structure. So it will access the data structure and then return the answer. It will not uh, access the map directly because in most of the cases, so accessing the main map is uh, much more expensive. So, and you want to store a small data structure and there are a few things. So one is like, you have to take care of like pre-processing time. So when you uh, build this data structure, there are pre-processing step associated with it. And then the size matters, size of the data structure matters. And then another important thing that matters is the query time. I mean, how fast uh, the server can start you to answer your queries. So ideally we want to minimize all these things. So we want to minimize pre-processing time as well as size of the data structure and also the query time. But in most of the cases, uh, people see some kind of trade-off between the size of the data structure and the query time. So if you allow large size, then your query time will be small. And if you allow very small size, then maybe your query time will be slightly large. 
so i mean uh, yeah so there are again several problems like reachability oracle which is like a data structure which just serves you reachability query or the connectivity query so when you uh, query with uh, two one source and destination it will tell you that whether they are connected or not or whether you can reach so if you uh, query with this node s and t it will answer you whether t is reachable from s and then there is a distance preserver or say distance oracle i will say that will uh, tells you uh, what is the shortest distance between any two points and then there are spanners so spanners is uh, so i'm not going into the definition of spanner but you can uh, think of like it will give you approximate distance up to some small factor because many times it happens that you don't meet the exact distance so and there are huge literature on each of this uh, topic so i'm not going to uh, tell you all this thing but let's now look more closely so in real life application what happens is the this networks or graphs are generally very faulty so faulty in the sense that there can be uh, failures of edges or vertices in the networks at any point of time so you can think of this uh, failures like road blockage or maybe some beach collapses then you cannot take that uh, path but uh, if you think carefully so how common these incidents are this is a very rare incident like how often a bridge will collapse that is like a very very rare event and also there are only a few failures that can happen at any point of time so like uh, how many road will be blocked at any point of time maybe a very few and now if you uh, place your query in the data structure it should uh, give you the correct answer but after this failure right so because if you use your original data structure and now suppose some failure happens some road is blocked and if you place a say shortest distance query to the data structure if it gives a path that uses that particular road which is currently blocked then this is not a valid answer so you want uh, something that should avoid that particular edge now okay, so one can say that okay so once such failure will happen maybe i will access the main map and then update my data structure but well that is time consuming generally updating data structure is time consuming so the question is uh, can we somehow build my data structure in certain way so that it can tolerate a few faults so i don't have to i mean even if some failure happen in the map you don't have to change the data structure but if you just say i mean tell the data structure that okay so this uh, road i know is now blocked so now can you give me a alternate shortest distance path so then uh, data structure should be able to give you uh, all time path so and that is the question that we will be interested in so here so the setup is exactly same you need to build a data structure and you need to minimize preprocessing time size of the data structure and the query time but now queries has to be correct i mean answer of the queries has to be correct even after a few failures okay so now so i am not going into uh, details of the general data structure but let's uh, focus on a very particular type of data structure which is called preserver so what is a preserver so preserver is a sparse subgraph 
So if, if you recall that what we want, we want the data structure is of very small size. So one natural candidate will be to store some sparse subgraph of the original, say, uh, road network. So that the sparse subgraph, it should preserve a property. Like if you want to preserve uh, distance, then uh, whatever be the shortest distance between any pair of points in the original graph should be same in this uh, small subgraph. But now we also need that this subgraph to preserve this property even after say k number of failures. Okay. Now you can ask that Oh, so is it at all possible? I mean, is there exist uh, any such sparse subgraph? And by the way, so when I say sparse, I mean, if your original graph, so uh, if you now say, consider that say, suppose you have n nodes in the graph, then in the worst case, there can be n squared, that means quadratic many edges. So when I say sparse, ideally we want something like linearly many edges present in this subgraph. Well, so does there exist uh, any such subgraph? Okay, let's take an example. So example of connectivity on the undirected graph. So I'm not talking about no directed graph. Let's consider undirected graph. And suppose there is no failure. I mean, it is the classical model, static model. So, is, does there exist any subgraph so that it preserves the connectivity property? Like it will uh, tell you whether uh, the graph is connected or not. Okay, you all know the answer, assume, because spanning tree will serve the purpose. So if you just store the spanning tree of the original graph, then a spanning tree or spanning forest, then you can see that it preserve the connectivity and it is uh, since it is a tree so it is a sparse subgraph okay so now what about say when there can be just one single failure does this uh, spanning tree still works so like if i still uh, store the spanning tree and then there is a fault in the original graph. So this edge gets deleted. This x to y edge gets deleted. Okay, so that means in the subgraph also, in the tree now, you don't have this edge. So now you ask me whether the graph is connected or not. So now you recall that I don't have access to my original graph. So this graph I don't have access to. I have only access to this graph, this subgraph. So now if I check the connectivity in this subgraph, since this edge is not present because of this failure, so now the answer will be that the graph is not connected. But uh, this is not a correct answer because in the graph there is an alternate path if you uh, look into just uh, connectivity between say these two vertices so then in the subgraph it will say that these two vertices are disconnected but now you can see that uh, there is a clear uh, another path which is not present in the subgraph but present in the original graph so the answer is incorrect if i store uh, this spanning forest it will not be even single fault tolerant So the question arises is, can we make the structure fault tolerant? Okay. So what are the problems that uh, people looked into in this area? So people study reachability preserver, shortest distance preserver, strong connectivity preserver, spanner, and all in this uh, faulty network. And generally how the progress happens is, Follows this, this progress follows generally this line. So people first uh, look into this very special case 
that uh, when there can be only one failure and already you have seen in this last slide that uh, this single failure the solution of the single failure case is not same as the solution for the static case so single failure case already have lots of non triviality in terms of designing algorithm and once people get a solution for the single failure so then they try to extend it to the dual failure and then from dual they try to extend it to in general uh, k failures for some problems this transition from uh, while designing algorithm from transition from the single failure to dual failure and then to multiple failure is very smooth because that uh, those techniques can extend but there are also several algorithms for which uh, currently we don't know how to extend uh, from say dual to multiple and even there are some algorithm which you don't know how to extend from single failure to dual failure so you can uh, maybe currently thinking that oh so if uh, i can get something from single failure then maybe it is easy to just extend to dual but that is not the case you can uh, believe me there are lots of non triviality involved in just in this step and uh, so there are certain algorithms that we cannot extend uh, that is just uh, sometimes just because of shortcomings of those technique used in the algorithm and also there are certain problems for which actually currently we know that the result that we get for single failure cannot even hold for dual failure so let's look into fault tolerant reachability preserver so what is fault tolerant reachability preserver so you have a graph g parameter k which is the allowed fault and then a pr set and you want to compute a sparse subgraph h of g such that even if there are any k failures then if you just consider any pairs x y then if x and y is uh, so y is uh, reachable from x in this our uh, g minus f which is the original graph after if uh, for failure of this uh, set if then if you now look into your subgraph after this uh, falls if falls the x and y so y has to be reachable from x so our objective is to construct uh, such a subgraph h from g so that uh, this property holds okay. so what is known for the uh, static model i mean it is not uh, completely trivial that uh, how sparse the subgraph will look like even if there is no failure so i so you don't have to look into this expression currently so let's focus on this part that uh, there are series of result which finally leads us to the conclusion that for root n pairs um it is fine to just uh, construct a i mean uh, fine to uh, store a linear size subgraph but can we achieve this thing even in this fault a faulty model there is a very nice result by baswana choudhury and rodi team 2016 where they show that if your uh, there is a single source so all the pairs are like from this source a is to all the vertices then uh, there is a subgraph which is of size 2 to the kn so which is linear when uh, k is small like constant so we get a linear size preserver so in that sense is a very nice result and the algorithm is also very simple and elegant but uh, one may think that oh so this 2 to the k is a large term can we get rid of this term maybe can we get something like order k in or something so answer is no because in their paper they also show that uh, there are certain graphs for which uh, you need this to to the k uh, dependency so now recently what uh, in one of my paper what i show with my co authors 
that if you now recall the bound for um, static model, which say that for arbitrary many pairs, if there are root n pairs, I can get linear size bound. But uh, this uh, this result is only talking uh, only talks about single source case. So now, what if there are arbitrary pairs? So what we show for that if you have a single failure, then so again, you don't have to look into this bound. Let's uh, focus on this portion. What we show that for root n pairs, we get a linear size bound. But the bad news is that our technique, it cannot directly extend to dual failure. So you may think that maybe there is some shortcoming of our technique. Well, there are some shortcomings, but there are also more trickier thing that is going on here. So the, what we also show in our paper is that if you want to handle dual failure, then actually even if you to tackle say very few pairs, say into the epsilon pairs, then also you need super linear size. You cannot get a linear size preserver that we show in our paper. So that actually gives a clear separation between these two cases, uh, single failure and dual failure. It uh, clearly shows that dual failure is much, much harder than the single failure case. So let me tell you some of the future work that we are currently interested in. So one is like in the reachability preserver. So can we get uh, sparseness under multiple failures? Currently, we have sparseness under single failure that I tell earlier. And also, I told you that, okay, so there is a separation from single to dual. But if you really looked into our paper, you will see that, I mean, whatever we show for the dual failure, the lower bound doesn't match with the current based upper bound. So there is a huge gap. So one needs to close it. And then after that, the next question will be, what about the normal data structure? So currently I was talking about a very specific type of data structure where the data structure is a subgraph of the original graph. So what about the general data structure, which is called reachability oracle. And then there are other problems like shortest distance, spanner, DFS, distance oracle and all. So where, how can we extend our algorithm or what can we show there? And there is also another fascinating direction, I will say that can we somehow merge the dynamic network with the fault on a network. So, uh, so here basically our concern is that, so you, if you imagine your network is changing, so this is the dynamic network. And now, so after it's a change, you want to, update your data structure in such a way that your data structure still becomes, uh, still be fault tolerant. So as far as I know, uh, there is nothing is known. And I think this is a the prominent research direction we should explore. Okay, so I'll stop here and thank you. And I'll be happy to take questions from you.